How's it Grant here and welcome to my camera comparison between the Sony Xperia 1 Mark III and what is widely considered to be one of the best smartphone camera systems on the market today, the Xiaomi Mi 11 Ultra. And so both of these camera systems have a main wide as well as an ultra wide angle lens, but the Mi 11 Ultra obviously has the larger sensors and Xiaomi has gone with a 5 times periscope zoom lens, while Sony has gone with a variable single telephoto lens, meaning that it can actually zoom in to pretty much a 4.4 times periscope optical zoom. So I think this is going to be a very good comparison here, although I think most people are going to end up liking one or the other because the Mi 11 Ultra pretty much is a modern smartphone that takes the approach of more heavy-handed HDR processing, a little bit more boosted colors, although it is more natural than most smartphones. So I think if you like that, you like social media ready type photos and videos, you're probably going to like the Mi 11 Ultra. If you're more of a purist and you like more natural looking colors and you don't like such heavy-handed HDR processing, I think you're going to prefer the Sony. And this is video being shot out of the basic mode on the Photo Pro app on the One Mark III. So this is where most people would be shooting their point and shoot videos. And it's not going to be this 21 by 9 type of video that you saw in Cinema Pro. And so that's how it compares back to the Cinema Pro footage as well as the Mi 11 Ultra here. And so just a few housekeeping notes of how all this was shot in the One Mark III. So like you've just heard, the One Mark III has a single app, Photo Pro, that has a basic app, which used to be its stock camera app, and the Pro side, which gives you more controls. All the photos you're going to see that were shot on the Sony were taken on the Photo Pro side of that app. And also, Sony does not have a dedicated night mode. So you're not going to see two shots at night, one without and one with night mode. You're just going to see one shot. Sony does have auto scene detection, so it will detect a night scene and take a long exposure. So that's how all the night mode, uh, nighttime shots were taken. So with all that out of the way, take a look at all the photos and videos I'm going to show you in both good and low light conditions. I hope to help you decide which of these two camera systems are going to be best for you. I'll wrap this up with my thoughts at the end, but do let me know what you think and leave a comment down below and enjoy the photos and videos.
Hey everyone, so this is 4K 30 frames per second video from the ultra wide angle cameras here on both phones. I'm just gonna pan around here so you get a feel for what each of these ultra wide angle cameras look like. The Mi 11 Ultra has a wider field of view. And if you're wondering, the sky right now is kind of a light blue. It's not really a deep blue like I'm seeing in the Mi 11 Ultra, at least in the viewfinder. We've been having some fires up north and so we've had some gray skies and it's finally started to clear out. So the sky isn't really a, a deeper blue. It's kind of a lighter, foggy-ish kind of blue. And from the viewfinder, the Xperia 1 Mark III is looking a little bit more realistic as far as that color goes, but everything else is kind of looking fairly muted on the Xperia, while everything really looks more pumped up or saturated on the Mi 11 Ultra. So again, these are the ultra wide angle cameras here to start with. And here we are with the main camera on each of the two phones. Again, I'll pan around here on both. And I've got the wind filter option on, on the Xperia 1 Mark III. So we can hear what that sounds like here outdoors. And I'll go ahead and start to pan over here to the right in a second, but let's take a look at the trees really quickly because these trees have some shadows in them. And on the Xperia, at least in the viewfinder, there's more of the shadow in the trees while the Mi 11 Ultra is trying to uplift that a little bit more here. But we'll pan over here to the right and we'll test zoom here on the cell tower. So we're in the main lens, so we can only zoom in so far. So this is gonna be three times with the 24 millimeter main lens there on the Xperia 1 Mark III. And we can go into, you know, a max. Well, let's go back out to three just to compare here on the Mi 11 Ultra. So this is about a three times on the Mi 11 Ultra just for comparison. And we can go all the way up into a 15 times digital zoom here on the Mi 11 Ultra. And that actually looks pretty clear on the Mi 11 for such a long digital zoom there. So let's go ahead and back both of these out. So back to one time here, let's go on the Mi 11 and one time on the Xperia and we'll test autofocus in the post with the Xperia 1 Mark III first. And so there you go, focus and refocus away. And focus is in and away. So not the, I was expecting some pretty quick autofocus here from the Sony. But I think it's just gotta be a certain distance and you're okay. So let's go here and one more time. And let's go here with the Mi 11 Ultra and we can focus in and away and we'll focus in and one more time and let's go ahead and try stabilization here both of these have stabilization at 4k of course Sony with a steady shot should be pretty stable on both as I walk through this path and we'll pull up at the end and pan up into the sky to see how they handle that changing afternoon light So here's some 1080p 30 frames per second footage from the front facing cameras on each phone. The Xperia 1 Mark III can only shoot up to 1080p 30 frames per second, which is a little bit disappointing that it can't do 4K from the front facing camera. They really haven't changed the sensor in a while. That's probably the most disappointing part about the phone. While the Mi 11 Ultra can shoot up to 4K, but I want to keep everything the same here as far as resolution and frame rate. So obviously I'm in some ideal lighting conditions here outdoors in the shade. Very even lighting, so both of these phones have every opportunity to show you as best footage as possible as I pan around here to kind of see how they each handle the changing light conditions. You can see some of the lens um, light come in there and get some lens flare on each of these. A little bit flaring out a little bit more on the Sony maybe. Let's keep going around here and we'll start walking to test stabilization so you can get a feel for what these front facing cameras look like and how the stabilization is. So let me know what you think about the front facing cameras here on the Xperia 1 Mark III and the Mi 11 Ultra.
everyone, so here's some low light videos starting out with the ultra wide angle lens on each phone. This is being shot at 4K 30 frames per second. So I'll just pan around to give you a feel for what this looks like. And of course, the Mi 11 Ultra has the wider field of view here with this ultra wide angle lens. And they both do a pretty good job of not flaring out these lights too bad. And those lights are blinking, it's not the camera that's flickering them. Those lights are, in fact, blinking. So if you're wondering, but again, ultra wide angle camera to start with, I'll switch over to the main lens now. And here we are with the main wide angle lens on each phone. As you can see, the Mi 11 Ultra, at least in the viewfinder, is definitely brightening up the scene more. The Xperia is trying to keep it more true to life. You can see by that tree line right there, it's well, much more well-defined on the Mi 11 than it is on the Xperia. And that's kind of how I see it with my own eyes. They kind of blend into that skyline there. And I'll pan around to give you a feel for what these look like with these different lights and the flickering lights here. And we'll go ahead and pan up into that bright light. And I think Sony with those, that Zeiss lens coating might be working because it's, at least in the viewfinder, it's not flaring that bright street light out as badly as the Mi 11 from what I can see and we'll pan over this way and we'll test stabilization by walking over here and we'll also see how they handle darker lighting conditions obviously that was pretty well lit with all those lights and as we walk this way it's gonna get much darker let's see how the stabilization looks how steady shot from Sony compares to the stabilization that's being offered by Xiaomi in lower light situations oftentimes it's a lot harder to stabilize in low light you usually see some jittering so it'll be interesting to see how the stabilization holds up here on both phones and already in the viewfinder phone, I can see the Mi 11 is really brightening up everything a lot more than Sony. Uh, what I'm seeing with Sony is more true to my eyes. Uh, it's kind of accent, highlighting those accent lights while keeping everything else in the scene dark. And we'll pan up into the sky. And again, there's a bit of light pollution around here. So the Mi 11 Ultra, you can see a lot of more um, grain and noise in the picture than you can with the Sony right now. We'll go ahead and pan over here to the left where it's a mixed lighting situation where you've got some lights on this alleyway, but it's mostly dark. And of course, the Mi 11 Ultra is definitely way brighter. Sony, a little bit darker than what I'm seeing with my own eyes, but definitely closer true to life if you're wondering about that. So there's a 4K clip here from both phones in low light. So here's some low light video from the front facing cameras on the Xperia 1 Mark III and Mi 11 Ultra. This is at 1080p 30 frames per second, which is the max resolution and frame rate on the Sony. The Mi 11 Ultra can't shoot the 4K, but I want to keep everything the same here. And obviously I'm outdoors in some optimal light conditions, so both these front facing cameras have every opportunity to give you the best possible footage here in this lighting situation. You can see the lights all around me to the left and to the right and to the back of me with those really bright street lights. So let's go ahead and start walking to test stabilization. And it should be looking pretty good and stable because you can see the amount of crop that's on these lenses right now. But we'll walk over to a much darker area here so we can test how they do transitioning from a lot better light to a lot lower light here, as you can see right now, as well as walking by a fountain. So we can test out the microphones and how well they're able to cancel out that background noise. Let's go ahead and pan around here and you can see the really bright street lights behind me. And the Mi 11 Ultra seems to be flaring that out just a bit more than the Sony right now. But let's go back into this darker area so you can see side by side how each of these front facing cameras are doing in a lower lighting situation and the Sony seems to be struggling right now but uh, do let me know what do you think about all the photos and videos that you saw as far as the Xperia 1 Mark III definitely the front facing camera is probably the low point of the camera system it's the same 8 megapixel sensor they haven't upgraded it and it's just not a very strong point of the camera system uh, the Mi 11 Ultra of course looks very good in most situations and I think Sony is just sticking to their guns in their image processing keeping more true to life type of colors uh, and everything else. So I think if you're gonna like boosted colors, you like the heavy-handed HDR of modern smartphones, you're probably gonna like the Mi 11 Ultra. If you like a more traditional approach to a more natural looking photo, but still very good quality and sharp looking photos, I think you're gonna like the Xperia 1 Mark III and the flexibility that it provides with all its pro and manual modes. I think the biggest surprise for me was how well the Xperia 1 Mark III did in low light conditions. I was a little bit disappointed in the 1 Mark II, but low light photos uh, seem to be pretty good here on the 1 Mark III, so let me know what you thought about low light. It looked really sharp, and Sony 
is does not have a dedicated night mode it just has auto scene detection so it'll detect the night scene it'll take a long exposure it does a very good job of evening out the scene so without really while well, maintaining the integrity of the night scene so it doesn't look like daylight or anything like that it still looks like night it doesn't uh, really boost up the shadows keeps the dark parts dark and uh, really accents and sharpens up the lighting areas so I think Experiment 1 Mark 2 did very or 3 did a very good job in low light of course you'll have an ultra did as well but it just brightens pretty much everything up but uh, it's gonna come down to personal preference because both these phones take completely different approaches to their image processing so let me know what you think which one you preferred and why and we'll continue our conversation in the comment section below and as always thanks for watching